Hey, welcome back to the shop. Today I want to answer a question. A lot of people that are watching my how to build wheels the easy way are asking about whether or not they need to get a spoke tensionometer. Today I'm going to answer that question and show you a couple of nice tensionometers that I use and recommend. So when you're building wheels, you get to the point of tensioning the wheel where you get the spokes good and tight. That's the key to having a wheel that doesn't go out of true. The spokes have to be tight enough. You know, for years, decades, maybe over 100 years, they didn't have spoke tensionometers. And when we tightened up and we built wheels, we just used our hands and got a feel for how tight the spokes are. You can sort of get a feel for it, but with your hands alone, you can't actually put a number on how tight the spokes are. So I would say probably in the 50s or 60s, they started coming out with these tools that actually put a measurement on how tight the spokes were and when you have a tool that'll give you a measurement of how tight the spokes are you can actually have a number that you can verify with a tool and you can demonstrate that the wheel is a certain tension which is good if you're a professional wheel builder you can write it down gives you a way to check over a period of time if the spokes have loosened up and they're nice tools to have and they've become relatively affordable this is Park Tools Tensionometer, which is, I believe is right around $90 right now. And it's well documented. It comes with all the information you need to be able to figure out what spokes you have on a wheel so that you can check it and get the, an accurate number on the tension. And then another tool that's a popular tool, tool that I've used a lot, is the Wheel Fanatic Tensionometer, which is a slightly different design. They both do the same things. They push on the spoke and how far the spoke moves from the force of the tool gives you a number that can then be translated into an amount of force or how much distance that the spoke travels when it's flexed, which is uh, kilograms of force is what it comes down to. And there's a little chart. These spoke tensionometers come with charts and you take a reading with the tool and then you use a reference from the chart. And what you're trying to do is get the wheel somewhere around 90 to 120 kilograms of force each spoke on the tight side of the wheel. So there's a bit to it. It's slightly technical, but basically the tensionometers give you an accurate way of determining how tight the spokes are. So you're not basically guessing by using your hands. I don't feel that it's mandatory that you have a spoke tensionometer, but if you do a lot of wheel work, if you, if you feel like you're not sure how tight spokes are and you'd really like to know, then it's money well spent to have one of these tools on hand. So I'll show you basically how these tools work on a wheel. So that you can see how the tool works, I put a spoke in here. You can see that the spoke is bridged over three points. And when you squeeze the tool, this pin presses on the spoke and you can see that it's bent the spoke and then over here is the you know, the number gauge that you actually read and because the spoke's not in a wheel and there's no tension on the spoke it's not getting any reading at all because the spoke is too loose but at a certain point the spoke will be tight enough and then this little needle here will point to a number on the gauge and that number on the gauge can then be used as a reference and you come down here on the left hand side you find the number on the gauge then you go across the chart and you find what type of spoke you're using. Here's a nice little gauge that the Park Tool comes with that lets you rest it on the spoke and you can determine what gauge the spoke is. You need to know the spoke gauge in order to reference the correct spokes on the chart. If you don't have a gauge, use a caliper. For butted spokes like these, you measure the thicker and thinner sections of the spoke. Only one measurement is needed for straight gauge spokes. For bladed spokes, measure their width and thickness. Take two measurements. Once you know what spoke you're actually measuring with the chart, you can determine very accurately how much kilogram of force there actually is on the spokes and what the tension is on the spoke. And in that way, you can go around the wheel and what you're trying to find is that the spokes are evenly tensioned. They can be, they don't have to be perfectly the same all the way around the wheel, but you're hoping they'll be within a small variance around the wheel. And you'll know because if a wheel, if the spokes are not evenly tensioned, you won't have a round and true wheel. Wheel. Almost always there's a lot of difference in tension. You have a wobbly wheel or a wheel that's not as round as it should be. 
The Wheel Fanatic Book tensionometer that I use is the Mitutoyu model. That's a digital gauge, so you can see it's a dig takes a digital reading. And here again, you can see that we've stuck the spoke in there. There's no there's no tension on the spoke, but it's bridged across the same three points, just like the Park Tool works. And when you get a number, that number isn't accurate, of course, but you would get a number on the gauge when you measure the spokes. And we'll do that. I'll show you in a second. But then after you'd go through that and measure the spokes, you would look at their tensionometer conversion chart and you would just go across the chart and find the tension readings. You'll see the little red arrow that I've marked the reading on the gauge and if you go across and you look at the spoke diameter, the spoke gauge, you'll come to a reading that this reference here shows you. So basically if I see that 0 0.30 reading on the spokes I usually build with, I know I have the tension high enough on the spoke which is going to be about 120 kilograms of force. I like the Park Tool and the Wheel Fanatic tensionometers because they come with really good documentation. There are some tensionometers that are produced by the company that make spokes and on those tensionometers sometimes the charts that they give you are primarily for their spokes. So if you're building with other spokes it's not as easy to figure out what the reading on the gauge means when you take the readings. You have to do some figuring out versus Park and Wheel Fanatic. They give you a broad range of numbers for a very wide range of spokes and different gauges of spokes and that's really helpful when you're building and checking a variety of wheels so I think they're very user-friendly tools also wheel fanatic and park tool have online apps that can help you you can actually map the tension on the wheel and create a little graph showing sort of exactly how the wheel and where the wheel tension varies it's kind of a fun app to play around with and you can learn a lot about tensioning wheels and the effect of changes and balancing spoke tension. So what you do when you're building a wheel and you want to check tension with one of these tools is when you get to the point where you're starting to have tension that you can actually feel in the spokes, they're relatively tight because you saw that if the spoke is really loose, the tool won't show the tension. There has to be a certain amount of tension before it shows it. Once it, you have a little tension in the spoke, this wheel is fully tensioned. It's a really old wheel. It's easy to see on, I think. You take the tool, you probably start, usually you start the same spoke. Usually you measure the tightest spokes on the wheel which on a rear wheel would be on the right hand side on front wheel either one is fine either side is fine on a disc front wheel you'd measure the disc side because that's going to be tighter than the other side so you put the tool on the spoke you don't put it on the butted section of the spoke you put it on the middle span of the spoke and then you let go and when you let go full force goes on the spoke and you can see the little needle moved over So maybe you can see that the reading is about 21. And we know if we look at the chart, 21, we have to look at the labels. Why don't we find a steel blade? We go down to 21, we come across, it's saying it's 127 kilograms of force. And I said we were looking for about 120. 120 to 130 is sort of the standard you see for most wheels. So what you would do is you would check each spoke. You'd go around and you'd move it and you'd go to the next spoke and you open to see the same number. So here again, you let go, you take a look, and sure enough, we're at 20 now, or just a little over 20. So that one's pretty darn close to the other one. And you do this all the way around that right-hand side of the wheel. Again, we've got 21, so I've checked three spokes. We've seen the same tension on all three spokes, which is a pretty good sign. Combined with the fact that the wheel is still pretty true, we're a pretty good idea. We would go around and measure all the spokes on the right-hand side just to be sure. And if you're going to write it down and verify it to the person you built the wheel for or to put it in your records so if the wheel comes back later, you can check it, you take each number on that. And if the numbers varied a lot and the wheel was wobbly, you'd have an idea how to make the adjustment to wait and make the wheel perfectly straight again. Using the Wheel Fanatic tool is very similar to using uh, the Park tool. You find a locator, so I use the valve stem, so you know that you're starting, which spoke you're starting on. So you go around until you come back to the valve hole and you just check those spokes on the right-hand side. With this tool, it's the same thing. You bridge three points on the spoke, so you rest the spoke on there in the middle, not on the butted section, and then you let go and the tool takes a reading on the spoke, which is 0.25, and then you come to the next one, and you check the next one. 
and you see if it's the same. So we got 0.26. So you come here and you take reading on the next one, 0.22. So there's some variability, some variance here. It doesn't surprise me. This is a really old wheel. It's been raced hard and beat up pretty bad over the years, but it's pretty close. So you would go around and you check the spokes like this. This is how you use this tool. And just like we did with the park tool, we have a reference chart and we take that, we look at the number that the reading that we got and we go across the scale we'd find the spoke that we're checking it would tell us what the kilograms of force the actual tension on the spoke are and based on that you could balance the tension you could decide that the wheel is tight enough and you're done with it and you could write the numbers down and have a reference and you could check the wheel later with the tool and you could show someone hey see i got it to this level of tension that's a recommended level that's what the manufacturer recommended and, or whatever some rim manufacturers tell you what the recommended tension is on the wheels some wheel companies certify to a certain tension so it's a good number to have can prove that your wheel is a good wheel. Well, that's a quick overview of spoke tensionometers. These are the two that I use. If you're a professional wheel builder, you build wheels for money for customers, or if you build for a manufacturer of bicycle wheels, you have to have a spoke tensionometer. I would say that, that your customers will ask what your spoke tension is, and you'll wanna be able to show them what the spoke tension is if they ask and verify it later down the road. It's good to know. You build certain rims and certain hubs and certain spokes, especially if the rim manufacturer calls for a certain tension, and you may wanna write it down and record it. If you work for a wheel manufacturer, sometimes there's a spec sheet that you have to fill out at the end of wheel builds with a serial number on the wheels and you show what tension you built the wheels to. So you can't do that without these tools. You can't guess, your hands don't tell you that. But in my easy, how to build wheels, the easy way video, I don't show a spoke tensionometer and I don't recommend you go out and buy one because as an amateur wheel builder, you can learn how to get wheels pretty tight with your hands only and learning how to use these tools, especially if you don't get an easy to use tool like these tools are very easy to use they come with good backup information or a documentation that tells you how to reference figure out what spokes you have and how to know exactly what the number is so these tools are easy to use but they're they do come at a cost and an amateur wheel builder may not want to invest until they get up to speed building wheels or they start building wheels for money uh, the thing is if you don't get spokes tight enough the wheel will usually go out of true but then you just tighten them up again a little tighter and then the wheel will stay true so you can learn how to tension spokes using your hands only you don't absolutely need these tools but for a pro you should have them and these are very good tools wheel fanatic and the park tool so if you have a favorite spoke tensionometer if you have tips for tensioning spokes please leave a comment be very helpful i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video